I want to talk about organizational theory. It sounds super, super boring, but I want to talk about modern organizational theory and where I'm going to go. So I'm going to give a bit of a preference, I guess. There is a lot of information already that exists on the internet for classical organizational theory. And I'm actually going to go towards something that's different than sort of modern <laughs> organizational theory. Whatever that is, my view is probably going to be far different than what everybody else is saying and doing and part of its reflection of my own experiences at this point. So I'm a professor, I used to teach organizational theory, now I teach research methods, I've take, taught, um, you know, strategy. These are all at the doctoral levels. So kinda, kinda know the literature, but you know, I wouldn't say that I'm a super expert in any sort of way. There's smarter people than me that's out there. But here we go. Um, all right, so organizational theory, what was it based on? There's actually a long history. I would go all the way back to the Enlightenment and really start thinking about some of those things. And really go back to like thinking of, you know, um, in, in economics with, uh, you know, Adam Smith that was talking about specialization. And then we started, you know, in the early of the last century. So in the early 1900s. There was folks that were talking about large organizations and how that they were structured. People like Mark, Max Weber, for example. And they were thinking almost in a military sense or what churches look like um, very much in terms of power structures and hierarchies um, and how they communicated together. This was a really strong, important thing in looking at decision, the decision structure. So how who makes the decisions, how, how they actually get made. And then in, I'm gonna skip really quickly, um, then in the 1950s and 60s, probably more of the 60s and 70s, there was, there was people that were interested in the idea of how organizations kind of shape themselves, what was called contingency theory. There's some great books that, that talk about this stuff. That's why I'm skipping through it so quickly. So the idea is that the shape of organizations and what they do, they change. They're really thinking about, again, kind of the 1960s, probably maybe 1940s, 1950s and 60s, um, industrial production that was going on. So still kind of heavy industry, still bureaucratic in terms of organizations and government bureaucratic arms, you know, hospitals, um, institutions, those kind of things. And then in the 1980s and 90s, there was kind of a blossoming in terms of how we thought about the world, um, in terms of, you know, international aspects of the world. There's people that were interested in it. There was like the, the advent of, of international business that kind of popped up and the discussion of international business and people were thinking about how organizations structure themselves within international settings um, because people all of a sudden, you know, particularly American, um, you know, folks, they all of a sudden, American and North American, I guess, they were thinking about the world more globally at that point because there was competition that was opening up. Um, and there was just various different discussions about these kind of organizational forms. And now there was also a real focus on the micro at that moment. And, you know, people like um, uh, uh, Carl Weick, for example, comes in and they start thinking about kind of more of the micro side of things. And then there was in the, you know, or the, about the, the, the yachts, right? Um, 1990 to the yachts to the tens, there was a real discussion on um, to the 2010s, so there's a real discussion on things like learning, um, things like the li lines of, um, you know, value creation, sort of abstract concepts that people were thinking about and were branching a little bit more beyond just this very rigid forms of organizational um, theory. And then there was lots of debates and, and, and discussion as of late about things like you know, power structures and where's the boundaries of where the firm actually ends. Um, you know, where are different aspects of, you know, why do, why do firms exist in this certain way? 
in terms of the boundaries that they actually have. Uh, and there's a lot of discussion about things like transaction costs, there was, um, you know, interest in what are called transaction costs, that there was real difficulties at moments when the firms just get really, it's difficult and expensive to actually do business. And so they, the firm ends at those moments. So there's this blending and how things happen. And, and along the way, you'll see that as you read this stuff, there's a real blending and trends, um, just change on how things actually happen over time. And what the interesting thing that I think if you take a step back and you look at how all of these images and how people thought about organizations and organizational theory was a reflection of the current paradigm uh, of what the current zeitgeist, current culture, you know, people started talking about um, you know, the 1970s, for example, there was, there was, you know, feminists and critical theory started popping up in the late 1970s and 80s, which was really interesting, right? Like actually talking about, hmm, you know, um, this, uh, all of our language kind of reflects a certain kind of way uh, of, you know, a certain sort of viewpoint. And there was, you know, there's, there's truth to that, right? We should be paying attention to that. So all of these things are very interesting in how it reflects current paradigms of society. Now, I think what's happening now, um, and, you know, there's discussion on new um, organizational, new forms of organizations. And I think what's happening now is a reflection of what's going on with the technology of, um, you know, the current modern thing that, that we would think about organizational theory. And I think beyond, this is where I really am interested in, is a real loosening up um, in the sense of forgetting about the sort of structures and, and what we're actually doing right now, right? And, and being more democratic in how things actually happen. So I think in my prediction, in terms of new forms of organizational um, theory, is that there's gonna be a tremendous emphasis and we start we've we're seeing this a move away an emphasis towards digital technology um, there's gonna be a real blurring between the lines and not knowing between humanity like humans and artificial intelligence first of all what's gonna happen is that there's gonna be a real blend between um, video AI technology and doing deep fakes. We're gonna see a tremendous amount of those things and we're not gonna know how to handle these things in terms of organizational theory. And I think there will be organizational theory that will pop up around these different things, um, around how we can leverage and connect with um, available, particularly in the information technology, but in extension to with the um, transportation technology that we have that's changing. So I think that the, in my view, you know, as somebody that, that looks at this, I think the changing forms, the current forms of um, discussions of technology really, really matter, right? So there's gonna be a, a much more emphasis on democratization of technology. So things, for example, like YouTube, like what I'm doing here is becoming, gonna become a lot more legitimate. And people are gonna, instead of doing textbooks, we're gonna start seeing a more transition towards this of doing things like YouTube, of where and, you know people build communities online and the discussion of, of communities, people are gonna stop forgetting about those things. We're going to see, although it's been really slow and, and you know there's beyond discussion of this, I think we're gonna start seeing a real democratization of peer review and the scientific process and we're gonna really start seeing things that are gonna replace it um, in various different ways. And this transition is gonna be extremely slow and it's gonna be much slower than everywhere else. So organizational theory is gonna reflect some of these things where there is very much this democratization. Now, what's gonna be challenging is the demonstration of legitimacy of these different theories and thoughts that people have. And that's gonna be the real challenging thing of what that actually means. And I don't know what is replacing that. I think there's the democratization right now that is replacing it in terms of people building trust. Um, online, for example, is gonna be a really, really big thing. Now I think too, here's the thing that's gonna be really challenging. We're starting to see this in terms of current conversations um, that are happening in society is 
people are going to be uncomfortable, very much so, with this democratization that's happening. And there might be some strong pushback against it. And so there might be more institutions that are going to pop up um, that are going to reinforce some of the existing institutions a lot more. We're going to start seeing those things. That's what we're seeing politically, for example, um, across the world. And we're probably going to see that very much within organizational theory where more and more people feel uncomfortable about these things. And so there might be ways to prevent that from actually happening. Some of these blending of things. Because we're reaching a point right now, for example, that artificial intelligence is becoming very good um, and very challenging to distinguish between what is human and what is not. Um, you know, emotionally, hu computers do better. Um, you know, that they, they handle themselves. So the, the sun's getting, the shade's getting in the, in the sun. Let me turn this for a second. Um, here we go. So we're going to see all of these different forms of organizational theory, what I consider theory, that are going to pop up. And the idea of theory is going to become challenged in the sense that it's not going to be as rigid as what people thought it used to be and what it's about. And so things very much so, I think textbooks and things like that are already gone. People don't really use textbooks anymore. They're, they're very much a dying breed. Um, you know, a lot of the way that we imagine the world is very much changing. And so what does that mean, right? Like, is, is everything that everybody says is, is organizational theory? I don't think so. Uh, but I don't know where that end, that, that end lies at this moment. I think that's where organizational theory is going to be very clever and interesting, where people are going to talk about these things and become more, um, we're going to need to talk about these different boundaries and thoughts and what it actually means because we are um, disentangling some of these challenges that we're facing right now with with an, um, a lot of with a lot of the ways that the technology actually works and a lot of the ways that the social structure works that we have. You know how I imagine things going to be in 50 years or things are going to be in 50 years with organizational theory is going to look far different and it's going to be a lot I think a lot more quote-unquote agile as they use in software um, where we're going to be we're going to have to be accepting of some of the things that the changes that are going to go on and there's going to be people that are going to be very much non-standard that you're gonna say, wow, they're not organizational theory. And what they're saying is not organizational theory. And a lot of people are gonna argue with them, but it is. Right? You gotta remember, I think what Marshall McLuhan said many years ago, the medium, the, the medium is the message, right? The, the, the famous communications um, professor from, from the Canadian pro communications professor was talking about, it's not just about when you're communicating, but how it's actually communicating or what's, what's happening is a really important thing. And I think that's where we're going. Unfortunately for some folks, unfortunately for others, it's gonna be a lot different in terms of what organized, modern organizational theory is gonna look like. And I think we're already talking about some of these things in the literature. A lot of things are going more phenomenologically based. A lot of things about talking about simple um, technology things are really becoming more important in terms of how things handle or how we look at the world. All right, take care. Have a wonderful day.